In this session, we want to get an overview of the process of personal Bible study. When I was a boy living in Philadelphia, we would occasionally go to New York City. I would always get lost. But on one occasion, I was on the top of the Empire State Building in what I think is the clearest day I have ever seen in New York City. Not many people there. There was a big Irish cop. And when he found out my plight that I didn't know that much about New York City, he gave me a tour, showed me two rivers, East River, Hudson River, and then pointed out the five major boroughs Manhattan being in the center. Told me where the Chinese section was, where the financial section was, and at least when I came down from the top of that building and became involved in the city, even though I was lost, I knew where I was. Because I believe the parts always take on meaning in light of the whole. So let's get the big picture. The first step in personal Bible study is observation. Remember, that's where you ask the question, what do I see? When the psalmist prayed, open thou mine eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law, he was praying for the powers of observation. He was asking the Spirit of God to tear the bandages from his eyes so that he might see with sight and spiritual insight. Why is he or she a better Bible student than you? Answer, they can see more. In fact, the only difference between any two individuals is what that person can see in a cubic foot of space. It's all there but you need to learn how to see it for yourself. The key we are going to discover is knowing what to look for. It's like a physician. I go to a very close friend who's my doctor. I've got a sore throat. He asked me to stick out my tongue, puts a little palate, on it and takes a look and writes a prescription. My friend, I can look in your mouth from now to eternity. I don't see anything. Oh, I mean, I see that you still have tonsils, you have teeth, but you see, I don't know what I'm looking for. And a student of scripture needs to be a man or a woman who knows what to look for. The second step, in the process is interpretation. That's where we ask and answer the question, what does it mean? Now my central quest is for meaning. Because the more you learn to see, the more you will learn to understand. Seeing always precedes understanding. And that's why we often hear, some of us see, but we do not observe. I was out driving with my wife a few years ago, driving by a very familiar site. I said, you know, sweetheart, did they just add that to the top of that building? My wife roared. She said, we've been driving by for 20 years, and that's been here. Did I see? Yes but I did not learn how to observe. And that's why I had a limitation every time I come to the Bible, having spent minimal time in observation. But interpretation involves learning to look for three things. First, learning to ask the right questions. I find that oftentimes as a teacher, my students do not take enough of their life to ask the penetrating questions because that's what an education is all about. And it is true of the Word of God. 
Don't ever hesitate to ask the Bible questions. Oh, people say to me, but I don't have the answers. That's all right. You will in time. Not too long ago, I looked at an old Bible of mine. In fact, one I had about four years into my conversion. I got questions all over the margins. Now I look at that same Bible today, I have the answers. But if you look in my present Bible, I have a whole new set of questions. So when you are interpreting, make sure you bombard the text with questions. And God in his time and by his Holy Spirit will reveal the answer to those questions.